Yeah. Hi, everyone. Hi, how are you doing? Okay, so I just wanted to um, talk a little bit about the code of conduct for this meeting. And just to let you know, we're here to respect each other. We know the rules. Um, if you want to go ahead, I just wanted to uh, reemphasize being respectful and kind to each other. Um, today, I would like to talk a little bit about KubeCon in the EU. Um, United in the cloud. And um, where we could include um, include the wins. Okay. Um, so we. Yeah, it wins. Okay, and just with terminal clarification, thank you. Okay, so um, we were talking about that in Chicago, right? And it, that's not about, um, okay, so yes, I was just reaching, recently speaking, I was about the keynote in Chicago. It was really terrific, a wonderful experience for everybody. And um, I can't even explain how that all happened. So anyway, I'll do that another time. But um, I just want to keep this meeting as brief as possible. But um, also, um, looking back at um, the technical uh, talks at KubeCon, but from um, Mari, oh, Maori to Deaf Engineering and all the contributions there at that, at that panel discussion and that lightning talk about empowering deaf and hard of hearing folks in the cloud wave. And um, so, and the interviews that we did, um, it was just really, just phenomenal experience and it was great experience. The whole KubeCon was just fantastic. So um, I know people were everywhere, you know, we just were scattered all over the place. I know it was pretty crazy, but uh, it was great. And um, we did some new um, interviews as well. And we did some really um, strong technical interviews as well. So that all went really well at KubeCon. And I know there was a lot of stuff going on. And if you want to know more, please reach out. I'll be happy to talk with you about it. Or um, our happy hour, our signing happy hour that we have, we could chat about it then and talk about KubeCon, what happened there. So if you have any questions, just please let me know. Oh, nothing? Okay. Anastasia is next, I think. Um, we were going to talk about um, language access at KubeCon and, and what we do for Europe as well. So um, we, we were talking about if we wanted to use universal sign language, ASL, or some different language or combination thereof. Um, the, we've got a bit of a problem because I'm not sure interpreters have been to that conference before. Um, and I'm not sure they fully understand about how communication works with interpreters and um, why we would need sign language access there and um, those sorts of things that I that we're having some problems we need to address with making decisions about how to move forward on that next conference <clears throat> and deciding what is best for us. And um, yeah, if you, you know, we, we want more signing and um, you might wanna put it in the database what, you, what you're thinking of. It, <clears throat> and then we can reach out and um, get interpreters once we decide what to do. And um, we have some of the, that world collaborative sign language kind of gestural universal sign that they do. Um, and like the World Deaf Federation, they've had that sort of thing there too. And I would like to kind of understand what their experience of the universal sign language was there. <clears throat> if they used ASL or universal interpreters or what they did and uh, get that understanding going. So what did you want to talk about now? 
Uh, this is Malad here, and I'll do this. Just one little quick thing I want to add to clarification for the interpreter, if I could just add a little bit. When I'm signing for Catherine, okay, yeah, for Catherine, so, oh, her sign name is Catherine, just clarifying for the interpreter. Go ahead. Martin has a question. One second. Okay. I'm hoping to sign, I don't have ASL. Um, I use international signs. I'm going to ask the interpreter to interrupt me if they don't understand. But we were talking about seven, uh, having a, a interpreters using one language. And I think it's best if we just have one international sign interpreter instead of having many different languages. And we just need people who have awareness and understanding of international sign and we want to make sure we're finding fee and it can be hard to find people that are really good interpreters at that particular language so in our country i do know a few people i can coordinate with but i think we should be able to find interpreters who can come and do international sign and if people want to find interpreters from their own countries, they can do that to work alongside those international interpreters. Uh, hopefully that message is clear for everyone. So Anastasia is saying, um, so for the conference, having one interpreter, we'll definitely need a team of interpreters because of the amount of time so they can switch back and forth because they definitely get tired. It doesn't really matter how what language we choose, we're gonna need a team so they can switch in and out, um, probably two to four interpreters. Okay, and so when they're up there on the stage, along with the speaker, we'll have maybe one or two or four interpreters on stage? But we'll definitely need a team because you know, I, don't, I don't know how many and I don't know how the budgeting will work on that, but Catherine might have some ideas. Catherine? Yeah. Um, Destiny's I think saying, was waiting. I wanted to ask Catherine a question and um, I wanted to tell them like in Chicago, um, we had interpreters, but I don't know who managed the CEUs for that. And I don't know if it will be the same as for us, but I know um, that Chicago, they gave us each two CEUs. Every deaf person had every two interpreters as well. So um, there was more than enough interpreters at Chicago's conference. And the keynote um, on the stage, um, let's see, if you want to think about different sections where you have your own interpreter and bring them along with you so that you can check out different things at your will um, and they can go along with you. But um, I can't say that will always happen, that there'll be someone in, available for you to just grab and take with you where you ever want to go. Um, but it, it might help. It might be better if we did something like that. Emmanuel, did you, you were waiting. Yes, yes, thank you. Um, I, I'm a French West, so I can help you to find the French interpreter who knows uh, ESL or ASL. So, uh, so I can um, uh, relate with them. Sorry for my English. Uh, I can uh, send you uh, in any address of uh, a interpreter in Trace. So I have a list of uh, interpreters who knows ASL and ESL. How many interpreters uh, you need? Anastasia says, um, well, um, when we have ASL interpreters in America, we have two per session. Um, in universal sign language, you know, um, I haven't, and, and British sign language, I think there's two as well. So um, 
I don't know what De Destiny or Milad, what your experience would be with ISL or um, what that would be. If you For me, I want ESL. Okay, yeah. And it's a different situation, so I don't know. We must it know how many uh, entrepreneurs you need to train them. Can I just So I, oops, sorry. Catherine, did you want to go ahead? Yes. I don't think we need that's for us to figure out right now, right? That's the problem for the CNCF. So the CNCF, we'll see how many and where, like what we want to help them is like, can we recommend agencies? Can we help them with what should be the official language? One thing that I think has to be clear is we cannot um, expect to have, well, first of all, there should be one main language. And I feel it, that since it's a European one, it's probably going to be international language. That's going to be the main language. We cannot expect the, the CNCF to provide two interpreters for a specific country for each person, because that's a lot of coordination. It's very complicated because if someone does not come, let's say we have two Hungarian sign interpreters and then suddenly that is sick and then you have those and those are not available are not useful for other people so it's, it's really complicated logistically so we have to be realistic and see like okay we have international sign language my question is like I've seen you communicating and I know you're all from over the world and somehow you are able to communicate so it seems to me like some com so I don't know what the ideal is is international sign language like accessible to most of you it's like because i've seen you talking i cannot differentiate between asl of course and and whatever else you're talking but what are the asks that so we have to create recommendations and what is something feasible that they can implement where it's accessible to most of you maybe it's not perfect perfect but again like having specific interpreters with very specific language skills for one, sp for one attendee only, it's going to be very complicated and it's going to be a logistical nightmare basically. So, uh, and one thing that I mentioned to Anastasia is we have to be careful how we frame things because we don't want it to sound like, okay, this is unreasonable and crazy. And then they are not taking us seriously. Right. So we have to think a little bit, what is the middle ground and what is feasible and good for everyone. So I know it's challenging. And I think that's why we should also kind of ask like WFD and so on, like, what are they doing? Because I think none of us actually has an, uh, experience with uh, international uh, events. Um, so maybe we need more information. But those are kind of my concerns. And I just wanted to voice them. Uh, and but the number of uh, uh, interpreters and everything, that's not something we need to figure out now. That's like the CNCF who will figure it out. We just say like, okay, here are agencies you will know who at, who registered, they will contact them. That's not our problem, right? Um, so we're helping them, we're, but that's a little, little bit too much in the weeds basically for, for that. So this is Martin and I would like to add something. Maybe if we have some deaf people using international sign, if they need specifically something for their sign language, like maybe Estonian or something like that. Because these may be people that don't understand international signs. So how could we work with people like that? Um, who wanted to respond to Martin? Um, well, I would, Destiny's saying, I would like to emphasize, um, do you, okay, so Milad and everyone who is in the EU, okay, um, when you get your resources for you, you could see it, send them to CNCF and find out what they're planning or how they're going to operate it, and then you could speak to them directly, or then Rob or Jay and myself or Jason um, could do some further negotiation via email with them and find out what is best for us um, about how do we how many interpreters we need and which language specialties we require 
And um, but then we can advise them on what's best for us and make a proposal um, that the working group has come up with resources and um, send that into them so that we're not, you know, freaking out over the logistics. You know, it's not really for us to worry about the logistics. We can give them resources um, to CNCF and um, then I don't know, maybe they'll have a specific planner assigned to the project. And then we can keep in touch with them about what kind of interpreters will be best and what events need interpreting, et cetera. And so they already have a resource list so that they feel confident that they can, that can source that for us. So, um, and we can definitely say we'll work together if they need help, if they need you know, any assistance at all, but we can hold on those decisions because CN CNCF is actually going to operate it and make those decisions. So if we want um, international universal sign language, we can certainly make those recommendations to them and they'll have them negotiate with them from there. And so that's what Rob and I did for Chicago. If we had any issues, we negotiated via email and um, would say, oh, that's not right. Or we prefer this or that. So, um, and they were very um, receptive to that. Is that. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah, I think that sounds good, Anastasia saying. And Destiny says, well, yeah, we don't, we we had a great learning experience um, in Chicago, but EU will be, again, a new learning experience for all of us. So I'm hoping that um, we could have more people stand up and say, hey, here's what we need for interpreting, and this is what we need you to provide, and we can learn from that. And I, I don't want it to be, you know, I, I don't want our expectations to be super high, though, because if we get there and then we're overwhelmed, I want reasonable expectations on this front for everyone. So um, I don't know how, we, we don't really know how it's gonna work yet. We, we're hopeful and um, we're not gonna be afraid to make recommendations to them and hand them resources, but we don't know exactly how it's gonna shake out. Does that make sense? Okay. I got it. No. Okay, Greg, Catherine, did you wanna say something again? Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, so. I think um, just because I think we could probably talk about this for an hour and we have lots of other things uh, on our uh, list. Uh, I think the best approach is really figuring out how other organizations who have done international events for uh, deaf uh, people, what's the best practice, right? And then maybe um, work on um, the um, document that Anastasia uh, created um, and then kind of come up with something more concrete. Uh, but I would really kind of want to know what they do because it is complicated. It was a lot easier in North America, right? So we have to acknowledge that it is a lot more complicated and we need to find something that works for the deaf attendees and is not crazy for the Linux Foundation. And some, so we, we don't need to reinvent the wheel, right? Like other people have done it. So I think let's see uh, or like, and if you have other ideas for organizations to ask, uh, please uh, let us know. Let's reach out. Let's I think like now focus on reaching out on an organization, asking them what are the best practices that you have identified, and then kind of put that into the document. I would also recommend trying to do that as soon as possible because it takes time to plan. And last time we gave the CNCF very little time, uh, so the more time they have. Uh, the better the experience, right? Because it's gonna, as, again, it's gonna be a little bit more complicated. So the sooner we can get that done, I think the better. Anything else on, on that topic? Anastasia, you maybe? Um, Catherine, I will send an email to the World um, Federation for the Deaf today and we can close this topic and pass it on to Catherine for um, other items that we wanted to discuss today. Okay. Um, okay, so KubeCon Paris scholarships are open. So everyone uh, who wanted to attend, please go ahead and submit that form. Uh, there are two questions that I wanted to have. Like, and one, uh, it says, please list any CNCF projects you have contributed to. Uh, it's very geared towards open source projects. So just put CNCF deaf and hard of hearing working group. It's not a project, so it can be confusing, but that's where you contribute. You're all contributors there. And then there's the other, the last section where you are 
supposed to um, describe how you contribute. That's the most important part where they're going to base their decisions on whether you're going to get accepted or not. So I would recommend just if you want, I mean, you can just do it on your own, but if you want, just do a Google Doc and share it with the team so we can help, help make that really strong. Because uh, that's, again, that's the key part of the whole document. Um, so yeah, just like a um, call to action there. Don't forget to do that. Uh, and then Milad knows about that. So we have KCDs, uh, we have these community groups um, on community.cncf.io. Um, and these are local community groups and local events that are done all over the world. And um, Milad discovered one in Budapest and he wanted to attend and we um, contacted- yeah, it was very near work for me. Yeah. It's a, a lot of hearing people went to it. I was the one deaf person who was there. So it was a little difficult to have access. Uh, there were no captions. So it was a little difficult for me to do. Um, but it was still important for me to be there as a deaf person. I sh needed to be there so I was able to learn something. And so maybe for next time, maybe in December, because it's not too far off, maybe I'll try that again. And hopefully it will be more accessible. They'll be able to add something for me, but I can talk with them about what I need, what kind of tools can be put in place for me. Yeah. So one thing that I talked with the CNCF is, could we create a accessibility pool, like something, resources that any KCD worldwide, in, so they're gonna add in their uh, registration forms, do you need accessibility? That is not a question that, that is asked right now. So they're gonna include that question and then people can say what accessibility they need. And what we want is that the CNCF has like something where a KCD can go and say like, hey, I have someone who is deaf and would like to attend. Can you help me with um, captions tool? Can you help me with whatever, right? So um, I asked the CNCF and they have, they wanna do this. But like, it's up to us to kind of help them create it. What do we need, right? So so I think the good thing with the Cloud Native Budapest, because we have Mark who is very interested, he's the organizer, he was very interested in making this a great experience for Milad. Of course, it wasn't as great as it could have been because like there was there are no tools, right? So I think like, can we make a Cloud Native Budapest our guinea pig, right? Let's Let's see, they are willing to do that. What does uh, Cloud Native Budapest no, need? Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, and then once that works, we say like, okay, let's have this as an official CNCF pool, and then like any Cloud Native group worldwide can access that. And we start kind of talking about that. So um, it's great that we have a group, we have an organizer who's willing to do this, but it's up to us to kind of come up with what is that package that uh, they will need. Um, so of course, first we need to prioritize KubeCon EU, right? Cause that's like, but like, I think like that is like, I would love to work on this as soon as possible too, just because we want to make those events accessible and, uh, as soon as possible. Uh, and something that they included already, uh, um, so the CNCF is recommending everyone to ask accessibility questions because they want to know what is the need. So they told everyone who has a group, you should include that into your form um, um, just to gather data too. Like we, they have no idea how many people need accessibility because that question was never asked, right? So uh, that's an important first step. And then the last thing uh, I requested, remember that uh, I think Milan and Rob were talking about creating or doing Kubernetes sessions and whatever. And I said, uh, we could actually do our own community group it's not virtual. It would be the same as the Cloud Native Budapest, but it would be like a virtual one, uh, Cloud Native signing meetup or whatever. And it could be, you could do these tech talks there um, and it would also be more discoverable. So other people would find it. It's also online. And that would be like, start. we would start creating like content 
in sign language and it could be like any sign language right like whatever you you kind of do or a mix or whatever but like let's let's start creating and making that available so people who are looking for events can see that that exists and um so uh so i think that's great so i did request that um mm -hmm. it's still kind of pending because of kubecon i think or whatever but it should come soon and i assume um we'll have to know who is the manager or like the hosts i think probably Rob and Milat for sure, because you wanted to do this, but it, you can have several hosts, right? Like you own basically that platform and that group, just as Mark works, uh, does own the Cloud Native Budapest, like several people could be the host for that. So hopefully we'll have that soon. Any questions or comments regarding the community groups? Anastasia saying, um, I do need um, also for like accessibility problems to be remedied in the UK because I know we were working with them and I know they're focusing on KubeCon EU now and um, I plan to let them know that we can definitely give them some assistance on that as well. Awesome. And excuse me, this is Martin here. Um, I'm having a hard time watching everyone and it's kind of hard on my eyes because it's very small. So I'm going to leave so I can get some uh, second screen. So for about two minutes, I'll be gone. And then I will come back when I have a nice larger screen, okay? So you're welcome to keep doing your thing. It's just, I'm gonna be stepping away from my computer. Okay, sure. Um, and so the other thing is what I would love to, this is a long-term kind of project, but I would love to start building a database of interpreters. And I asked the CNCF if we could do this. Um, the idea it's like, it's all freelancers, no agency involved. So uh, interpreters here uh, get, more money and it's also more um, accessible, um, cheaper for the people hiring them and they get more. So I think it's a win-win. Um, so the CNCF had something similar like a speaker bureau. So you could like request speakers and whatever. So I was thinking something similar and this is for interpreters all over the world, right? And people could say what kind of sign language they have, where they're based, if they wanna do, are available for doing things virtual or in person. Uh, it takes a long time because it takes a long time to actually find enough people. So it's useful. Um, but the CNCF said they would be willing to do that or interested in doing that because they also want to have access to good interpreters. We could also try to provide uh, training material because our, um, yeah, I mean, our everything in Kubernetes is very specific. So how do you sign Kubernetes? What are all the, so, so people can start getting used to it a little bit with the technical or cloud native terms, making it a little bit easier. Um, and so, yeah, um, the, uh, I was talking to Chris Anacek and he was saying like, well, let's start with a Google form where we can start capturing all that information. So uh, interpreters here as well, uh, if you're interested, uh, put your name down. <laughs> it's uh, supposed to be good for uh, all of us. Um, so, yeah, and like if you know, uh, inter like I think first of all, like what, what do you think about the idea? Because I like it. Yeah, because I don't know yeah. finding interpreters was difficult, right? So finding interpreters who are willing to do conferences, who are familiar with uh, the space, is even more difficult, right? Because it's not technology; it's like cloud native. Um, so again, it's a long-term project, but I think like as people see it and as interpreters see the benefits uh, of kind of participating and, and learning about that and, and being more active, I think like it can grow. So hopefully maybe in a few years, you know, you have a really good database. Um, the idea is that KCDs maybe might just pull from that database, right? Like let's going back to uh, um, the Hungary um example again, maybe there's someone in Hungary and then just go there and they 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 can find it. Uh, interpreter who was um, kind of familiar with uh, the ter terminology in our space. Um, so 
if that sounds good, I think I'm just going to start a Google uh, Forms doc and then we can just like um, put it in, yeah, link it in the agenda so interpreters here can see it too. And uh, you can also reach out to uh, your interpreters and let's just start gathering names. Um, and oh, and before I, I do that, I will do and ask all the questions that I think are important, like, and then uh, have that for review as well. Because uh, I think it's straightforward, but maybe something I'm missing, right? Like, like what type of languages uh, were they based and so on, but maybe something I'm missing. So I'll share the first, the draft whenever it's ready for feedback and then we can start gathering uh, names. Uh, and I will answer that in a little minute um, when I'm done. Um, so the other thing I was talking, so I was talking to Chris um, and a check as well. So you, the people who were there at KubeCon, you saw that there are awards. And I would love to see awards for companies that hire people with disabilities, right? Like companies, and not necessarily like the big ones like Apple and 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 Microsoft and the companies that actually have a lot of money. Uh, but I think that's a nice way of um, raising awareness <laughs> about, and then also like you know, giving a shout out to companies who are making that investment. It's more, it's my, it's a little, it's more of an effort than hiring a hearing person. And so um, we, sh we do want to celebrate that and, and, and um, um, kind of um, give them credit. Um, so it's up for us to come up with a name. Um, so I, I think we can actually basically do that uh, in Paris. Uh, we have to come up with a name uh, and uh, probably also kind of figure out how we select a company. So uh, we don't have to figure that out right now, but foods for thoughts. Um, any ideas or comments on that? Yeah. No, <laughs> Yeah, Sandeep, you can go ahead and talk if you would like. You can you can go ahead if you'd like, Sandeep, and talk. Uh, oh, one question I have is, to show the company, the company that we are planning to give an award to, it has to necessarily be working yeah. with the awareness technology. That you said that we, you said that we want to give, uh, to give an award. You're saying that we want to give an award to companies who are hiring people with disabilities. Okay. Yes. So my question is, does the company necessarily have to work in Kubernetes technology or it can be any technology? Um, I think that's a good question. I think probably not like I think they don't have to be like super into cloud native, but maybe somehow like in that space, right? Like uh, use cloud native technologies or something. They don't have to be like very, very cloud native, but I think like a link would be important. Hmm. Catherine, I think um, a link to the cloud native um, local opportunities might be something um, good if we had, if we knew what was accessible and what efforts were being made, um, you know, so we could thank them. And also um, where people were working, if we could get some idea of where they were from KubeCon and, um, and then have them be like a part of the cloud native community in terms of that. I don't know. Well, that's our goal, Destiny's saying, and that is to demonstrate, hopefully, to other companies who can see that and duplicate our efforts there. Ah, yes. So, so just to let those companies know if they want to hire people who are deaf. Um, to join their companies and grow that network, there are resources there. Yes. So 
what we can do is educate everyone um, and give them some visibility on it and educate them so they can know that there are resources there and they can feel more comfortable to move on with hiring more of us. And it doesn't have to be that hard. Um, we can help make it more it, easier for them. So it, that would be something that we could do that you know, other companies who've done it could partner with companies who have not to demonstrate that it is a possibility, it's doable, and here are the resources you need to do that. So I don't know the right word for it, but um, when people can see someone else doing it and they can hopefully, um, by demonstrating and educating, make other companies feel comfortable to do that as well and think, well, maybe it's not as bad as I thought. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think um, we want to, we also want to get to employers, right? Right now we're, how do you make conferences more accessible? And we started with the big ones. The second one is like, how do you make local events um, uh, uh, more accessible? The next one, which we really have to focus on because this is like an open source uh, community is like, and it's probably not going to be that crazy but it's like what do project needs to know like need to know right like project owners and maintainers for so people can contribute to open source project and then I think we want to do that with employers right because that's actually the most important part of all right but um um so I think like as we work on those recommendations I think uh yeah we should also kind of see like how like how can we use that um companies who want to educate help educate other other companies who are kind of curious and want to know so I think that's like a big that's going to be probably the biggest face and the biggest challenge just because there's so much it's much more difficult to make wins there um and so I think the award kind of leads towards that right and then um um kind of because we haven't really focused on employers yet um so I don't know if we can have people who actually or find employers who actually want to help at this stage just because we haven't made those, we haven't really focused on that yet. But I think that's definitely, should definitely be the goal or what we're working towards. For KubeCon Paris, I was just thinking maybe we do like also like a Google form where people can submit uh, votes for companies that... Um, have hired uh, um, people with disabilities and why. So you can nominate people and maybe we kind of have that uh, out there. Everyone here can uh, can nominate someone. The CNCF can um, share it on social media. And we just do like a request out there and ask people like, who do you want to nominate and why? And then we make a decision based on that, right? And, and how long they've been doing that. So that might be the easiest way to get started um, because obviously we don't know all the companies here and we should kind of allow companies that are not necessarily, that don't have employees necessarily uh, participating in these conversations also to be nominated. So what do you think about that? I like that, Justin says. This is Jay. Um, I was wondering if we could have a way of linking up people with disabilities, like um, those who are deaf and hard of hearing. Um, sorry, can everyone see me okay now? Yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead, Jay. Yeah. Um, if we could have um, like deaf and hard of hearing folks or people with disabilities in general, um, at willing to talk about accessibility and inclusion and everything, sure, but their experiences that have been good or, you know, so-so, not so great, or, you know, some, or needs improvement, that sort of thing. And uh, maybe take a vote and have them vote for that company um, when they've had a good experience there. Maybe that's a way to do it. Destiny, I understand what you mean. So for example, like if you've had experience with your company, that's not been good. Um, and 
we could offer to give them resources to help them improve their accessibility experiences for employees and in the hope that they will alter the way they do business and um, maybe become someone who is voted for in terms of a company receiving accolades in the future. So um, I don't know, just a, hey, it would be better for your employees if you do these things or utilize these resources, or this is how you could support your deaf and hard of hearing employees. And if they do make a change, applaud them for it, you know, and maybe they could at some point get a most improved vote or something like that for making the effort. Uh, that's just an idea. I'm, I'm looking for the right words. I don't, I don't know, but it, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's just a thought. What did you say, um, Milad? Yes, I wanted to add on some experience. In my opinion, what I see is that each company is different. And so if we could look at their websites, they may say, oh yeah, we agree. We need to have full accessibility, but they may not, it's not something you can automatically believe because sometimes it's just marketing and advertising. So companies may say things, but if you actually look at what they're doing, there's no experience of them actually doing what they say. So we need to make sure we approach that and specifically fight that. So for example, just a couple of weeks ago, I had an interview with another company, very well-known company, very well, world renowned company. I think it's like the second financial company in the world, Morgan Stanley. So I wanted to look into that because they talk about accessibility and support. And I was curious whether they actually did that. So I sent a resume and CV to them. And the next morning, they said, yep, we're ready for an interview. And they said, you know, what do you need? Any sort of accommodations? I told them what I needed, like an interpreter. And if I were to work full time, I would need an interpreter because I want to make sure I'm able to work smoothly with my colleagues. And then for the last interview, I said, I do need captions. And if we can bring an interpreter. I felt like everything was looking great. And then the day of the interview, it didn't work out. They didn't know how to do, turn on the captioning. Everyone was very confused and lost about how to do that. And I had sent all of this information in email, but they hadn't followed through on anything. And they were very apologetic. And they said, well, let's try next time. But then things kept getting delayed. They kept having to learn something new about how to make accessibility work. And it was going higher and higher up the chain. So obviously to actually provide the access wasn't as effective. Once we finally got everything working, the captions were there, but then they said, well, we can't have chat. I was blocked from using chat. Well, I'm not then able to access and give information from my sign. It was one of the worst experiences. So I encourage everyone for any kind of influence we can have on companies to make them go through the learning process so that the next time they are more prepared for other people. We need to keep pushing and providing these examples. I know websites can talk about having full accessibility, but I don't trust what I read on websites. Yeah, um, just, I think that is something that, that I would love to do as part of the employer education as well um, is how do I, or best practices for, I know you, you provided all that information, right? But um, um, yeah, I mean, there is a lot of like ignorance or no experience or whatever, and people were apologetic, which is a good sign, right? Unfortunately, they didn't read it properly, but like providing guidance for employers uh, 
while interviewing, what for hiring, right? So ideally, if uh, by the next interview, you can send them a link to a website versus like putting everything in there, right? Um, um, so I think uh, that 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 would be really helpful, right? Uh, it will also help other people who may not know what to ask for until um, it actually happens, right? Uh, and you may forget things or something. So I think that's that that is a good experience, and it's kind of sad that it's happening with such a big company who should have more experience with that or a little bit. Uh, but I think that those are things that we can try to address as well. Um, going back to the award. So I think like that's something we have to kind of think about. Like it's not like the CEO of a company should be able to uh, to uh, uh, say, um, okay, I'm going to submit myself because I think our company is really great, uh, right? So it, it we should kind of define like who is able to make those recommendations, like those nominations, maybe it should be someone with disabilities, right? With their own experience. We have to think about it a little bit, but yes, it should definitely not be someone who is uh, not impacted by it and just believes it's a great company for, for uh, or a very uh, um, disability friendly company and they have no idea what the reality is. So we have to make sure that that is not the case, right? Um, so I think like, let's, let's do that, right? Like, let's come up with a little form. Again, I think I would, I put that as the third priority because the most important thing is like figuring out KubeCon EU, figuring out community groups, and then the award, we can do that a little bit in parallel, but I think those are kind of, because there are a lot of things that we want to do. So I want to keep us a little bit on, um, track of what is the most important thing. Um, so if there are no other um oh no sorry i almost forgot this last thing and i know anastasia was interested in that so while talking with chris anachak again that's the C uh, cto of the uh, cncf he told me uh that there is a budget for creating educational material the linux foundation has budgets for that and it was like oh if there is anyone in this group who would like to do that you know in in sign language or whatever because that's like a, a field obviously that is not covered there is a budget for that. I don't know how it looks like, but I assume like people are compensated for creating that. Uh, I know we have people on uh, this call as well who would do that as a hobby. So I don't know if that's like uh, some interest. I know Anastasia has interest in that. It kind of fits into the uh, community groups thing as well. So that is more like live, but like it, it's also educational. So that that would be really cool, uh, I think, to create content and a sign language uh, about cloud native. Um, so, Anastasia, did you have any questions? I know that we were going to talk about that, but yeah. Oh, um, you're talking about the educational materials. I, I would need more, really more information on that um, and like would need to come up with a plan. Yeah, I have to see like what I, I can ask for. First, I wanted to ask like if there's anyone who's interested, right? And it's it's good to see that there is someone. I can ask them for examples of other people who have created content for the Linux Foundation and have been compensated for that. Like what, how, what does it look like? Um, and um, yeah, then we can take it from there, right? And, and I think like, it would be great to kind of combine it with the live community groups. It's like if we do that, if one of you does like a tech talk there, uh, maybe do something a little bit more polished, but then like for an actual uh, like long-term kind of video that is lives a little longer. Um, yeah, I think it would be, I don't know, like combining that uh, since there is an interest in that as well would be great. Uh, but yeah, I don't have too much information, but I will ask for specific examples so you can have a look at what that looks like. Okay. Maybe I can add something as well for content, technology content. About three years ago, I started doing some content on YouTube where I wanted to showcase more deaf people 
and to show the technology that they can learn. And up until now, it seems like the community has really grown. Honestly, worldwide, it's grown. So now I'm starting to see more proof of how this works so that it's something we can actually show that there is accomplishment coming from this. So maybe we could support this and invest in it to make sure that tech content is provided. It would take teamwork on how to get that up and running and get that content out there. So, but I do see YouTube as a fantastic place for content. I mean, millions of people watch YouTube in a month. So I think that would be a great place to put out the content. So I would suggest YouTube. Well, yeah, and the good thing or one thing that is beneficial uh, doing it as part of the Linux Foundation is that that gives a lot more credibility. Like, I know it's a huge name, you know, so it's like, I think like the YouTube is great too. I don't know where that the that kind of content lives. But like uh, whatever is done in the community groups can certainly be also like republished by the CNCF. But like leveraging the Linux Foundation name and doing like signed content, technical content within that name also kind of is a totally different liga, right? Like, so I think like if there is any way we can do that, I think that would be very, that would be just amazing, right? Because it's it, it shows also like the embracement from the Linux Foundation and, and the support. So I think we need everything. Um, so, but yeah, I don't have, uh, I'll, I'll follow up with more information about what it is and where it would live. I think it would not live on YouTube, the paid, the one that is paid. I, yeah, I was thinking mm, okay. of like, like Harvard University in the US um, or any of the big universities, um, they'll have people um, sign some kind of talk, some educational talk. And, um, it's like a big platform is what I'm trying to say. And Linux would be a big platform as well. And it'd be better than just one person putting out their own content somewhere. Um, so it would be like the, the branding, the name would lend it cloud or credibility. And so just see what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking too, if we really make sure it's good and open for, wait. We want to make sure we want to teach as many people as we can. So like putting on, on a larger website so people are able to access and see it and be able to par participate and teach other people, <clears throat> other deaf people and have a better reach would be great. We only have five minutes. Um, so I know that we have had some points from Martin and Sandeep. I wanted to be sure we get to those. Martin, do you wanna go first? Okay, so we was talking about speech to text. So really quickly on this topic with speech to text, I there's really no way to focus on the machine. I mean, I know there's a lot of things growing up, how to get the machine learning going and get the technology, but I specifically want to focus on connecting interfaces so that way we'll have better captioning more better speech to text so that we're able to get all of that information in one central place where we can all build and grow on the technology and i want to improve accessibility for everyone so for one example maybe having five people who work together 
sharing ideas and all working together. So I think that would only make accessibility better for everyone. So it's important that it's an open source and I know CNCF has people who have experience in working with this, and that's great. They're very excited to want to do this. But I also am thinking of finding other people who are interested so that it's not too focused in one area. So that was one idea I wanted to put out there. There are many out there where we can um, draw from, you know, and to, to kind of create one best place for that, that would be awesome. Yeah, I think if we can bring in lots of different places, it doesn't have to just be in one. And Sandeep, we wanted to get to your message as well. Sandeep. Sandeep, did you want to comment on what you put in the chat or on the agenda? Oh, so I took, I, I've already put it in the, I've already put it in the document. Do you want me to speak it again? Um, if you want to talk about it, you can, but you don't have to. Your choice. Because I think we are running out of time. Okay. Maybe we can just continue the conversation on, on our Slack channel. Sure. Yeah, we can definitely yeah. do that. Yeah. We always run out of uh, time. Our meetings are fully <laughs> packed. So, so much to discuss. So it's, it's a little bit of a shame, but uh, let's use our Slack channel to continue the conversation. I think that's a good, there's good way of following up. Does it sound good? Sounds good. <clears throat> okay. I think one minute. Ah, we're right there. Are we meeting the next time? <laughs> when do and we one month. Because uh, the next time it's the last week of December is a holiday, no? Oh, let me check. Oh, probably. We, we will probably try to switch it then. We have to look at um, the calendar and maybe we push it a week off. Yeah, we'll have to check. I didn't, yeah, I didn't think about that, but yes, it's probably not a good time. Okay. Uh, I'm okay. really happy to be meeting you all for the first time. Yes, we're excited you made it. So glad you showed up. Bye. Bye, everyone. See you later. Bye-bye.